Hey guys, let's now learn how we can drop um, elements from um, from data frames or drop entries from data frames. Let's create a data frame and now we're going to create um, a two-dimensional NumPy array and then use it to create a data frame. So let's do that. Let's say, um, let's call it for example my data frame. I'm still using the same notebook as you can see equals um, PD dot data frame, and then in it I'm gonna say um, now I'm gonna use the same function from NumPy that generates random numbers. Let's say we let's take 25 numbers, but now let's uh, reshape it. We've seen that before. Let's reshape it into a five by five. Uh, into a 5 by 5 matrix. So if I do that, then my data frame now looks like this, right? 25 random numbers and the indices are between 0 and 4, 5 indices. So what I can do now is I can specify an index. I can say index equals, uh, let's give it 5 values. So A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma e and uh, I can give it so the indices by the way the indices are the rows these guys so if I do that and display the data frame you will see that these are the indices right this is the index the row numbers right the row values or the row names if you like to specify column names I can say columns equals and then I also pass it five values I can say c1 C2, C3, let's move that out of the way, C4, and C5. Run that, and now the data frame will have column names and row names or labels, if you like. Okay, these are the, the indices are always about the, the rows. So, column labels and row labels. Okay, so what we can do now is uh, if we drop a row, what we can say is my df dot drop, and then I can give it the row name. So if I wanted to drop row B, I can say B, and then by default drop drops a row. Shift enter, and you can see that drop B now is gone. Okay, and it actually creates a new data frame. It doesn't do it by default on this original data frame if I do, if I see the contents of the original data frame they're still exactly the same right and if I wanted to drop uh, a column instead of a row then again I have to specify the axis as we saw before when we did the concatenation if I tell it axis equals one then I don't have a column uh, called B that's why it complains but I can tell it drop column two for example and then I can have the data with that, with that column two again it doesn't do it in place, but rather it creates another data frame. So I can say like, you know, my df2 equals, and then it will copy it. Uh, it will create a new data frame. But we can actually do it in place by uh, taking advantage of the, the function parameters. If I do shift tab on the drop function, I can see here we have an option called in place. It's by default, it's false. But if well, if we specify that, it will do that in place. So if I drop C2, notice now data frame still has C2, but if I do it in, in place, it will take it out of the actual data frame. Okay, I'm sorry. Shift enter here and shift enter here. And um, okay, C is not there. Oh, it's, that's why it's false. I can say it's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I can do that, and then my data frame now is not going to have column 2 as you notice here, right? Very good stuff. In fact, let's have another look at the function, shift tab, let's have a look at the doc string. And you notice the axis is by default uh, is set to 0. So by default, it removes columns, whereas if we set it to 1, then, I'm sorry, by default, it removes rows, and we can set it to remove columns by saying axis equals 1, as we did here, right? I hope the idea makes sense. Uh, plenty of useful stuff. What else? What else can we talk about here? 
Um, I believe that's fine. Let's stop here and continue in the next video. All right. Thanks for watching and see you next time.